Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation. Gold and silver fall for the wrong reason. Let's explore. Indeed, we see the prices dip a little bit. There was much larger dips earlier in the day, but uh, as we get very close to the market uh, closing up for the day, uh, the gap is narrowing here, and perhaps maybe the market saw the error of their ways because they are falling for the wrong reasons in my view, but that is the case. The market reacts based off of um, psychology mostly, and even palladium here is showing a very dramatic move. We're going to cover some of these things here in an article here from CNBC. Gold retreats, silver does too, palladium sinks 9%. And why? Because of the progress in Ukraine talks. And so, yes, we've seen some positive developments, at least hopeful developments. I'll put it to you that way. Not necessarily positive. We don't know what the outcome is going to be, but... That's just it. The markets react to hopeful news, and they re react very quickly. Essentially, the markets want things to go back to normal, to be okay. The market has been wanting a bullish uh, trend, want to go back to that bullish uh, situation they've had before. But we're a long ways away from that, I feel, for a myriad of different reasons why I think gold and silver should continue to climb up. But they fell more than 1% from this article I'm reading from CNBC to a one-month low, while palladium sank nearly 9% on Tuesday as signs of progress in Russia-Ukraine peace talks dented demand for precious metals. Spot gold fell to $1,912.82 earlier, and the, the gold futures dropped to $1,910. Silver and platinum both fell 1.1%. 24.56 per ounce and 973.84 respectively, but it's recovered some of those losses. We are seeing a free fall in metals after a potential major de-escalation de from Russia, providing a big spark for risk appetite and optimism that we could see a potential end to this war, said Edward Moya, senior market analyst at Oendo. Although I think it's quite a bit premature, maybe in this late day they are realizing that. Moscow has decided to drastically cut its military activity around Kiev and, and Chernihiv in Ukraine, one of its deputy reference prime ministers said, after talks between Russian and Ukrainian teams in Istanbul. Hopes for an end of the conflict now in its second month lifted risk sentiment in wider financial markets. Benchmark 10-year bond yield held firm near multi-year highs, on bets for aggressive interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve to float soaring inflation. Gold is highly sensitive to rising U.S. interest rates as they increase the opportunity costs of holding non-yielding bullion. Although, when they raised them last time, it dropped only for a short amount of time before picking back up again. I think that's going to be the case again here uh, after these latest developments here. Phillips Tribal, chief market strategist of Blue Line Futures in Chicago, expects gold to be anchored around the $1,900 at the moment. Yes, I think that's probably uh, a wise assessment for the moment, but it's already anchoring above that now because it's 1920.60 right now. But for that brief moment, it was. <clears throat> didn't anchor long. Uh, these talks could fall apart, and you could see gold rally right back to 1950. And the thing is, a shifting of the strategy out of uh, Kiev into uh, the Donbass region um, is something that has been talked about here. But we also realize that prior talks between um, the folks on the Ukrainian and Russian side, including a pretty high-level um, oligarch, resulted in what some fear that they have been poisoned and to send a message to not go straight too far in these talks. And that poisoning would definitely come from Russia. Spot palladium dropped 5.1%. is now about 4 some odd percent. And after falling to its lowest level since January the 21st, 
at $2,032.97 earlier in the session. The auto catalyst metal has tumbled down 40% since scaling to an all-time peak on March the 7th as supply concerns from Russia eased. Anything that's coming out of Russia and was concerned about supply disruption has corrected lower, including palladium. So it might be a good buying opportunity, but a buying opportunity is dwindling away as we see these prices kind of narrow here. But nonetheless, there's another article actually from Fox News that is kind of interesting to talk some more about this and some of the aspects of this. Um, we have the good dollar has generally been the primary safe haven in recent weeks, but interest in gold, while perhaps somewhat subdued, is still relatively solid, said Rana O'Connell, head of market analyst at EMEA in Asia and StoneX in a note. Investor sentiment has remained positive in the face of continued geopolitical risk. Reuters reported gold's, Russia's gold stash has some value for Moscow, and that's obvious. Though Western sanctions have frozen a chunk of the country's foreign exchange reserves following its invasion of Ukraine, Vladimir Putin's regime has about $140 billion of the yellow metal that is beyond the direct reach of sanctions. Now, they're trying other ways to squeeze it with indirectly. Now, you've heard me talk about that in prior videos. Using it can require complicated and risky schemes, but that also makes it difficult to track. Putin has been shoring up his defenses against economic restrictions for years. Russia's gold holdings have tripled since its annexed Crimea in 2014, triggering U.S. sanctions. The senior White House official last week estimated bullion makes up about 20% of the country's central bank overall reserves. To make use of the hoard, Russia would likely have to physically move gold beyond its borders. That's why the United States and its allies last week moved to close that loophole. The Treasury Department said any transactions involving gold held by Russian Central Bank are subject to existing sanctions, <coughs> which means anyone who helps convert the precious metal into U.S. dollars could face penalties. Despite these risks, some supportive or opportunistic countries may be willing to help Putin Venezuela, for example, may have relied on Russia after the United States stepped up sanctions on the South American country in 2017. Opposition Representative Julio Borges said last year that Russian chartered planes picked up gold from Venezuela to be refined in Mali and then resold in the United Arab Emirates for dollars and euros. In fact, I covered that story as well when it occurred. Pretty fascinating indeed. Russia could also turn to nefarious actors. In 2020, the U.S. State Department said it was following a visit to Venezuela by a private jet of Libyan militia leader uh, Khalifa Haftar, who was suspected in trading gold for dollars. Uh, the usually complex schemes can take years to prosecute. U.S. courts are still examining some aspects of an alleged plot that started in 2010 and involved several Turkish entities that helped Iran evade sanctions, including turning gold into cash. The plan involved money servicers, front companies, fake humanitarian food shipments, and businesses located in the United Kingdom, Switzerland, and Hong Kong. So uh, that is pretty interesting. Now, the Russian ruble has fallen by more than 20% against the dollar this year. In fact, I think one ruble is is worth less than a cent right now. It may have gone up a little bit, but you know, you think about it with this nefarious activity involving gold and some of these other countries that Russia may take. Well, rather than the United States drilling domestically for uh, oil, here we're turning to Venezuela and others uh, for our oil uh, and Iran, the largest state sponsor of terror, and Venezuela. So. Go figure. So he, we certainly uh, are not doing the right thing here. Now, that's not illegal. At least if we do it, it's not illegal. Uh, but I don't think we should. And But nonetheless, kind of shows the hypocrisy of some administrations uh, and how they um, are doing this under the guise of helping the environment when these nations could care less about the environment, where they are at. But nonetheless, <clears throat> fascinating story. Interesting developments today, and we are seeing 
Also, the bond yield curve, we talked a little about that as well earlier, is thinking that perhaps we may see a, another recession. Some people feel that that uh, could be something that could be a sign, but if they reached near-term highs, multi-year highs, on uh, bets for an aggressive interest rate hikes, that very well could have reversed. But nonetheless, very interesting indeed uh, where we are at, and I believe that this is just a little hiccup but as I mentioned, and I defer back to a video I posted uh, when this invasion began, and we started to see these dramatic leaps in price uh, for gold and silver to be prepared for volatility. This is just another example of it. Although as I record this video, we're seeing some corrections in the markets. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. We'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate share, comment, and subscribe.